Uh, Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John Lapuka is with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's the latest? Well, the latest is we're awaiting Nancy Wrightbull, who is the second American who was infected, and she's flying over here, and she's going to go to that same area. In, but what in, do we know about his condition? His condition, we're not getting any more information. But I will tell you this, that to me, I know Dr. Tom Frieden said, he was asked on Face the Nation yesterday, you know, could, will he, he survive? Died. And of course, he's going to say, I can't predict the future. I understand that. But personally, when I saw him getting off that ambulance and walking under his own power with just a little bit of assistance, I found that very reassuring. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things is fear. A lot of people right now hear the mortality rates. They hear no cure. And there's this immediate sense of, well, then why are we bringing these two people back to America? What exactly is the prognosis? How do they help these people once they're at Emory? Well, it's true there's no specific cure, but you can do what's called supportive treatment. So you can give intravenous fluids, and you've heard about this complication where they have trouble with clotting their own blood. So if that happens, theoretically, you could give clotting factors, things like that. But I think in terms of the fear, it's so important. We don't want the adrenaline level of the country rising. You know, it's, it's not a healthy thing, not just psychologically, but you can, in, this, in the missile attacks in Israel, in the Scud missile attacks in 1991, there was an increase in heart attacks in Israel. Stress is bad, not just psychologically, but there are other medical things that happen. So I think to have an unnecessary rising of stress in the country is really, it, it just doesn't make sense. What is the experimental serum they're talking about? Well, what is serum, first of all? So you take a blood and you spin it down and the, and the red blood cells go down to the bottom and that clear yellow stuff on the top has stuff in it, factors from somebody who's already been infected with Ebola and who has survived. Now, there are antibodies there. Perhaps there are other factors that you can then give to somebody and uh, you hope that maybe that is somehow protective. I think in terms of the fear, people need to understand this. There's Africa and there's the United States. Africa, I'm very, very worried. This is an out of control ep epidemic outbreak right there. There and, and who knows what's going to happen who when it's going to come under control. Borders. Here, I think you've heard, yes, theoretically, the virus could come here, but if it comes here, we know people don't realize there have been past outbreaks that have been brought under control, dozens of them, since the 1970s, then the CDC and other organizations know how to handle this and to control it. What about this vaccine that's going into a clinical trial? What is the latest with the vaccine? Well, this is, again, phase one. It's going to start in September. It's a small number of people, and uh, I'm told it's a couple of proteins. It's, it's going to be attached to some other factor which can allow it to introduce. And you're never going to see somebody uh, ever given Ebola virus to see whether this vaccine works. So it's going to be a while before we know whether it works, and there are some other treatments, the, a couple of uh, medications that are combined with the vaccine after somebody gets infected. One thing this will do is cause a serious consideration of the, of the danger of virus. Yeah, I know. I think that's true. And, you know, if, if there's a, some tiny silver lining to this dark cloud, it's that this increases attention exactly. to this whole field. Exactly. And maybe you can get some research going. And you know, both of these relief workers had two kids. So a lot of thoughts are with them. Absolutely. John, thank you.